Good morning everyone, it's Dean with AirplaneOwnerMaintenance.com and I would like to show you today a few simple things about safety wiring and how it can be done to make it look professional. I have seen a lot of safety wiring that looks really, really shaky and like someone is a real amateur. I don't want that for you. I want you to be able to do your safety wiring in a way that looks like it was done by a professional. So let's take a look at the tools that we'll need to do this task. First of all, we have a pair of reversing safety wire pliers. These pliers, by turning the knob to the right, will twist to the right, and then by turning to the left, will twist to the left. To me, this is an indispensable tool when it comes to safety wiring. Now, realistically, the whole task can be done with this one tool. However, I also like to use a few other tools because many times, especially in an engine compartment, there are very close quarters, and so I find this tool, duckbill pliers, I've ground the teeth off of the inside so they're smooth and will not mar the safety wire. I use those and I'll show you how. I also use a small pair of needle nose pliers that are very handy for bending the tail around in close quarters. And then a very small pair of side cutters that are very handy also for cutting the tail or taking old safety wire off where it would be cumbersome to cut with the safety wire pliers. So let's go over to this Cessna 206 and take a look at where the brake caliper is located. Okay, we are here beside the right wheel of this Cessna 206 and inside the wheel, right here on the inside, is the brake caliper. Now we're not going to take a close look at that because I've got a brake caliper on a stand that will be much easier to see. So I just want to mention that some brake calipers require safety wire on the bolts and some do not. The way you can tell is if the bolt has a drilled hole in the head of the bolt. If it does, it needs safety wire. If it does not have a hole in the head of the bolt, it was probably designed to be simply torqued to the proper torque and it goes into a locking nut cert in the brake back plate. So this particular one is the type that needs to be safety wired. And so now we're going to take a look at our stand and take a look at what it takes to do a professional safety wiring job on a brake caliper. These two bolts, notice that the bottom two bolts are already done and that is a nice job on that. So we're going to safety wire these top two bolts. Here we go. I'm taking the wire and I'm feeding it through the, the hole. Sometimes it takes a little bit of help with pliers to get it through. I'm putting it through until I have it. This one is plenty long. I don't need that long of a piece of safety wire, but it's, it'll be good. So we want this, when it's finished, to look more like either a backwards S or a Z. If it looks like a normal S, it's probably backwards. So we want a pattern that looks sort of like that, a backwards S. So I'm going to swing the top loop up over the top of the bolt and then when I turn this twist to the right it will tend to keep this top loop down, uh, down across the side of that bolt. I'll give it one twist and then here's where my duckbill pliers come in handy. I'm going to put them right in there and I'm going to pull a bit and twist. One, two, now that top loop is nice and tight. Then I'm going to take the both strands of wire, pull them down, and I've noticed that the hole in the next bolt is over here on this side of the bolt. So we're going to twist to right there and then feed it back through that bolt head. So I'm putting my safety wire pliers on there. I'm going to twist it to the right. As we said, we want to twist it to the right to make sure this half loop stays on top of that bolt head, on, down on the top side. So here we go. We'll twist it until it's about the right. You're looking for maybe eight or so twists per inch, but generally after you do a lot you can tell when it looks right that is what your safety wire should look right should look like so we're going to come down to this area and see where we are 
I can see that my twist is slightly short. So I'm going to give it one or two more twists just by hand. Okay, now that should be perfect. I'm going to take this other end, feed it through. This is where one of the places I use my small needle nose pliers. Being careful with this loop, if it gets in a if it gets twisted up, it can cause a kink in the wire and it might break. So we want to make sure it feeds through nice and evenly. And then once it gets to that point, we can pull it nice and tight. Making sure that the, the, the whole strand of twisted wire is nice and tight. Now on this one, we're going to swing around the bottom side of the bolt. This time, in, if I twist this to the right, it will tend to want to pull this half loop on top of this bolt. So we do not want that, so to prevent that, we're going to twist this one to the left, and as we do that, it will keep that half loop down on the bottom. Once again, I use my duckbill pliers, give it a couple of twists, make sure it's nice and tight, now at this point, really the safety wiring job is finished as far as the functionality goes. We have something that looks like a backwards S or a Z, and these bolts now cannot loosen. But it's not finished because I have three criteria that I use for safety wiring. First of all, it needs to keep this, the bolts tight, which it will. The second thing is, for me, it needs to be beautiful. So we are going to twist off the tail of it. We want to make sure that we go plenty long with the tail. And I'm turning my safety wire pliers knob so it will twist to the left down here. We want to make it plenty long. So I'm going to twist it up because we do not want to cut right out at the end of the twist because it might look a little untwisted. We want it to be nice and neat and concise. Now in this case, it's very easy for me to cut the tail. Now we want to cut right in the twisted area. It's very easy to use these in this case because I'm out in the open. But in a small engine compartment where it's very difficult to work, this little pair of side cutters works very well also. And I'm just going to snip it off right there. My third criteria is that it needs to be done in such a way that it will not cut me or anyone else that's working in this area. So we have come around. Now we want to bend the tail to the left so that as we bend it, it will continue tightening the loop. So I'm gonna grab it, twist it around to the left, bend it back into itself, and then right up against the side of the bolt and then I can move my hand, my fingers across that area and I'm not going to get cut. So it's keeping the bolts tight, number one. It looks nice, number two. And number three, it will not cut me when it's finished. Thank you so much everyone for watching the video today. Just want to remind you it's Dean with AirplaneOwnerMaintenance.com. I would encourage you to stop by the website. There are pictures and occasional videos that go along with the podcast episodes. And I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the podcast in iTunes. And I'm also hoping to bring you more videos that will be helpful in the future. Thanks so much.